What if a particle could pass through a solid wall, not by force, but by simply appearing on the other side? This is quantum tunneling, a phenomenon where particles defy classical logic. For decades, scientists have debated whether tunneling happens in zero time or even faster than light. Now, a breakthrough study by Patrick Schack and Enno Gysi uses atoms as quantum clocks to measure tunneling time directly. Their method challenges old assumptions and opens new doors in physics and technology. In this video, we'll explore how they did it, what they discovered, and why it changes everything we thought we knew about time in the quantum world. At the quantum scale, particles behave in ways that defy our classical understanding of the universe. One of the most fascinating and controversial phenomena is quantum tunneling. The ability of particles to traverse energy barriers they theoretically shouldn't be able to cross. Traditionally, this behavior sparked fierce debate. Could particles tunnel faster than light, violating the cosmic speed limit set by Einstein's theory of relativity? In some experiments, researchers observed what seemed like superluminal tunneling by tracking the peak of a particle's wave function. Since that peak appeared to arrive faster than a comparable free-flying particle, it gave the illusion of faster-than-light travel. But this interpretation was based on an indirect measurement and lacked a clear understanding of what time really means in the quantum context. The wave function's peak is a mathematical construct, not a physical stopwatch. Understanding tunneling time has both practical and theoretical implications. In the sun, Tunneling enables hydrogen fusion at rates sufficient to power our daylight. In microelectronics, tunneling influences transistor behavior, flash memory, and even quantum computing. Yet, confusion about whether tunneling is instantaneous, delayed, or even superluminal has persisted because the quantum nature of particles prevents assigning them classical paths or trajectories. The new framework introduced by Patrick Schock and Enno Gysi resolves these inconsistencies through a unified operational theory of tunneling time. Rather than relying on wave crests or semi-classical assumptions, they use the atom's internal oscillations as a clock, treating each atom as a self-contained timing device. This approach abandons classical analogies entirely, acknowledging that tunneling particles exist in delocalized quantum states where the notion of arrival time becomes fuzzy. Their method builds on the principles of Ramsey interferometry, commonly used in atomic clocks. By initializing atoms in a superposition of two internal states, these researchers transformed each atom into a miniature quantum timepiece. The core innovation is that phase shifts between internal energy levels reveal how much time was spent tunneling, without ever needing to track the particle's position or assign it a velocity. Importantly, this method reveals a small but measurable delay, about 10 to the power of negative 26 seconds, refuting claims of instantaneous tunneling and preserving the sanctity of relativity. Schack and Geese's theory even unifies multiple previous definitions of tunneling time, such as Wigner phase time, dwell time, and Larmor clock time into a single framework. Their technique naturally incorporates relativistic time dilation via the mass effect of atomic states and does not require external triggers or assumptions about classical trajectories. By doing so, they not only eliminate past ambiguities, but also redefine our understanding of motion in forbidden quantum regions. They highlight that no superluminal tunneling exists when clocks travel with particles, resolving a long-standing paradox between quantum mechanics and relativity. To truly measure tunneling time, Schock and Gysi transformed atoms into Ramsey clocks, quantum systems that tick using internal state oscillations. Their experiment, outlined in Science Advances, uses a coherent superposition of two atomic states, forming a time reference that operates during and after tunneling. The core process unfolds in three stages. First, a pi over two pulse initializes the atomic clock by equally mixing the two internal states. Then, 
the atom encounters a potential barrier and may tunnel through it, with each state accumulating a state-dependent phase shift based on its interaction with the barrier. Finally, a second PI by two pulse recombines the states and allows scientists to read the interference pattern, the phase difference between them. This phase difference contains three components, the laboratory time, the relativistic time dilation, and the actual tunneling time. By comparing tunneled atoms with reference atoms that follow barrier-free paths, the researchers isolated the contribution due specifically to the tunneling event. What makes this technique powerful is that it doesn't rely on indirect signals or complex modeling of wave packets. Instead, it reads time directly from the oscillations of internal atomic energy levels, akin to a stopwatch writing with the particle. This allows physicists to measure interaction time within the barrier, not merely when the particle arrives on the other side. To boost accuracy, the experiment uses ultra-cold atomic clouds, minimizing momentum spread and reducing uncertainty. Further refinements include delta kick collimation, which prepares atomic wave packets with ultra-low momentum spread, and double brag diffraction, ensuring both internal states receive equal momentum without bias. These steps allow for an unprecedented level of phase sensitivity. Moreover, Shack and Giese designed a differential measurement scheme. Two identical clocks are launched in opposite directions. One tunnels, and the other serves as a reference. This ingenious setup cancels out common noise sources, such as magnetic fields, laser phase noise, and relativistic time dilation, leaving behind only the pure tunneling delay. Their theoretical model also covers non-ideal conditions, including state-dependent barrier heights, mass defects, and Doppler effects. They mathematically separate these variables and show how to mitigate their influence. Even spurious phases from state-dependent momentum differences or imperfect trap releases are accounted for. Perhaps most notably, their approach transcends the limitations of earlier tunneling time theories. The Larmor clock method, for example, depends on spin precession inside magnetic fields and lacks a true frequency standard. In contrast, the Ramsey clock ticks at an optical frequency orders of magnitude more stable and accurate. They also show that Gaussian barriers, common in experimental setups, induce lower tunneling times than rectangular ones, but the trend and detectability remain. By adjusting the barrier shape, width, and particle energy, the tunneling delay becomes both observable and tunable. Ultimately, the Ramsey clock technique offers a clean, relativistic compatible, an experimentally feasible way to observe time during quantum tunneling. It respects the probabilistic nature of quantum mechanics while bringing rigorous operational clarity to one of its most enigmatic behaviors. Schock and Giese's unified operational theory paves the way for a new class of quantum timekeeping and measurement tools. Their method shows that quantum tunneling is not instantaneous, and more importantly, it never exceeds the speed of light. This has profound implications for reconciling quantum mechanics with general relativity. In practical terms, understanding tunneling time enables better predictions in systems where barrier penetration influences performance, such as transistors, quantum sensors, Josephson junctions, and next-generation quantum chips. Accurate tunneling models help reduce leakage currents, improve coherence retention, and optimize thermal budgets, all of which are vital in the race for faster and smaller devices. Moreover, their work feeds into quantum metrology. Ramsey clocks, enhanced by differential light shifts, could evolve into tools that probe short-lived quantum states or detect minute gravitational distortions. This opens opportunities in fields like precision navigation, gravitational wave detection, and fundamental tests of space-time curvature. The implications extend to philosophy of science and foundational physics. By showing that time and quantum mechanics can be both observable and quantifiable, their work counters the long-held notion that quantum time is inherently undefinable. It bridges a gap where general relativity's world lines clash with quantum delocalization, 
revealing that even in classically forbidden regions, time persists as a measurable quantity. They also suggest that the tunneling delay can be artificially amplified by boosting the clock frequency through differential barrier engineering, such as tunable light shifts. This could push experimental accessibility into the realm of optical atomic clocks, where precisions on the order of 10 to the power of negative 18 seconds are already routine. While their proposed experimental implementations demand extreme precision, potentially billions of repetitions to isolate the tunneling phase, they outline realistic strategies to reduce these burdens. Techniques like quantum squeezing and using magic wavelength transitions can drastically cut the number of required trials. Finally, their framework encompasses and refines previous approaches. It integrates Wagner phase times, dwell times, and arrival times into a single coherent language rooted in observable phase shifts. This brings consistency to a domain long riddled with interpretational conflict and offers experimental physicists a roadmap for designing next generation tunneling experiments. Thanks for watching. If this glimpse into quantum tunneling sparked your curiosity, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. There's so much more to explore. Stay tuned for the next dive into the wonders of physics. Until next time, keep asking questions and stay curious.